The summertime is right around the corner, which means the trees in New York City are greener than ever, which makes me want to make the greenest pesto ever. You might even say it's the besto pesto. That's a friend's joke. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with a bunch of basil and I'm gonna pick 150 grams of the large basil leaves. I'm also gonna save the small basil leaves, the baby basil leaves, for garnish at the end. I like to save my basil stems for tomato sauce, but that's all up to you. Next, I'm weighing out the same amount, 150 grams, of roasted unsalted pistachios. You can roast these yourself, I bought the store bought kind. If you have a food processor, this step is so much easier. Unfortunately, I don't have one, so I gotta use my mortar and pestle. Now I'm weighing 25 grams each of grated Pecorino Romano and grated Parmigiano Reggiano. I love grated garlic, so I am gonna use two cloves but if that's a little bit too much for you, one should be fine. Now I'm getting ready to blanch the large basil leaves and I'm using a pasta basket in order to not fish around a large pot of water, risking overcooking my basil. This is a quick blanch, no more than 10 seconds. And you wanna make sure you have a bowl of ice water next to you in order to stop the cooking process. This is called shocking. Shocking will prevent your pesto from turning black and help it maintain green for longer. Squeeze as much water as possible out of your blanched basil and you don't have to reweigh it. I'm only reweighing it to see if the weight is the same, which in this case it is. Now in your blender, add your blanched basil and this is where I fucked up. I did not weigh my olive oil because every time I make this recipe, I don't weigh anything but the trick is to start with a smaller amount of olive oil much less than you think and work your way up I ended up using about two cups of olive oil and make sure you puree on high speed that is very important now I'm adding a little bit of salt remember your pecorino and your parmesan are both salty cheeses so don't go crazy with the salt you could always add more now add the rest of the ingredients to the pesto and mix thoroughly. If it starts looking like cake batter, that's perfect. This is what you want because we're going to add pasta water to this dish and it's going to loosen up that pesto and it's going to coat all the pasta noodles and it's going to look super, super delicious. Now add a good amount of pesto to the bottom of your pan and don't turn on the stove. The only heat coming from this dish is from the pasta and it's cooking water. Make sure your pasta water is properly salted and you can use any pasta you want. I'm using a dried spaghetti that has to cook for at least 9 minutes. Make sure your noodles are not stuck together and use some of that pasta water, there you go, to loosen up that pesto. Toss, 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 and if it's still too thick for your liking, just add more pasta water. I don't know if you can hear it, but when you're tossing pasta, you want to listen for that sloppy, squishy sound. That's how you know you have the right amount of sauce to pasta. Now let's get ready to plate. A hundred percent you could just dump this onto your bowl and it will taste exactly the same. But if you want to impress a date, let's try to get some height on that noodle. With a rubber spatula, make sure you get all that beautiful pestle that we worked so hard on, get it all on the plate and then I'm only using the Parmigiano Reggiano, but you can use both cheeses for garnish. 
And then here we go with the baby basil that we saved in the beginning of the video. Now you have a pasta dish with the greenest pesto ever that screams summertime. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe and leave me a comment below. Let me know what your favorite summertime pasta is.